Hello, I'm Dr. Alexander Levin, viticulturist on faculty with the Department of Horticulture and core faculty member of the Oregon Wine Research Institute at Oregon State University. Today we're here in Southern Oregon to demonstrate how to use the pressure chamber to schedule irrigations in wine grape vineyards. The two most important questions you need to answer for irrigation scheduling are how much and when. The pressure chamber is an important tool that can be used to determine when you should irrigate. Precisely controlling application of water and managing plant stress in wine grape vineyards is critical for optimizing fruit yield and quality. Depending on your production goals, you may want to manage irrigation so that your vines are not stressed for water at all during the growing season, or you may want to moderate water, water stress at key times to manage vine vigor and or improve fruit quality. Either way, it's hard to manage plant stress if you don't measure it. Many growers use soil-based sensors to monitor soil moisture conditions and schedule irrigation events. However, due to the variable's distribution of water in the soil profile and uneven soil drying, soil-based measurements may not be representative of the overall condition of the vines. By using the pressure chamber, you directly measure the level of water stress your vines are experiencing because it measures the plant and not the soil. Think of it as measuring the plant's blood pressure. Before we dive into the instrument and the measurement technique, let's first review what it is we are actually measuring. Water moves through plants from the soil to the atmosphere along what is called a soil plant atmosphere continuum, or SPAC. Water is transported in the vine through a network of tiny pipes called the xylem. These pipes extend uninterrupted from the root tips all the way along a shoot to the leaves. Water is carried through the xylem from the soil to the atmosphere, much like a straw in a drink. In this way, the plant is connected to both above and below ground environments and dynamically responds to both. Because plants are the perfect integrators of soil and atmosphere, plant-based measurements are generally the most effective compared to soil-based measurements. When the sun rises, the light stimulates the opening of tiny pores on the leaves, called stomates. Water vapor is lost through these pores. That water must be replaced. So, water is drawn into the leaf from xylem in the petiole, which draws water from the stem, which draws water from the trunk and then from the root, which draws water from the soil. There is resistance to water flow at each step of the way. This chain of resistance creates tension in the xylem from root to leaf. The flow of water through the vine and the resulting tension in the xylem increase until the daily maximum is reached at midday, between noon and 2 p.m. The tension in the xylem increases because it becomes more difficult for the plant to extract water from the drying soil as the day progresses. After 2 p.m. or so, the flow of water through the vine begins to decrease along with the tension in the xylem. We can measure the tension in the xylem of the leaf by using the pressure chamber, and this tells us something about how much water stress the plant feels. This is done by enclosing a single leaf inside a plastic sandwich bag, excising the leaf from the vine by cutting the petiole with a sharp razor blade, and putting the bagged leaf in a sealed chamber with the cut petiole end remaining outside of the chamber. It's important to leave enough petiole tissue attached to the leaf blade to allow it to fit into the chamber and still protrude through the sealed grommet. Then we slowly apply external pressure to the leaf in the chamber and watch for sap to rise up to the cut end of the petiole. The amount of pressure needed to make the sap just appear at the cut surface is related to the amount of water tension that leaf was under. The higher the pressure, the greater the original tension and the greater the water stress of the plant. The most commonly used units of pressure are bars and megapascals. The pressure we apply to the leaf and read on the gauge, is a positive number because we must balance the tension in the xylem, which is a negative number. So, the number that describes the tension in the, is the negative value of whatever we see on the gauge. For example, if we measure 10 bars of balancing pressure, then the tension is minus 10 bars, or minus 1.0 megapascals. We can think of the negative number as a water deficit. 
The lower the negative number, the greater the water deficit and the greater the stress. For example, a value of minus 12 bars or minus 1.2 megapascals would indicate a greater degree of water stress than a value of minus 8 bars or minus 0.8 megapascals. The scientific name we give to this negative number is the water potential. There are two main factors that affect the measurement of water potential. First, the position of the leaf on the plant, and second, the environmental conditions that affect the whole plant. Outer canopy leaves exposed to full sun are losing water much more rapidly than leaves that are in the shade, so the water potential of the outer canopy leaves is reduced compared to the inner canopy leaves. Weather, soil dryness, and root health also affect water potential values. Weather conditions are the primary factor. For example, cool, humid weather and wet soil will give you a higher, less negative water potential value, such as minus six or minus seven bars. As the soil dries and the plant has more difficulty extracting water, you'll see a strong effect of the, on the water potential reading. As tension in the xylem increases, you'll read a lower water potential value, such as minus 10 or minus 11 bars. In fact, any condition that negatively affects root health, such as disease, physical damage, poor aeration, or compaction, may negatively impact water uptake and gives you lower water potential values. Thanks for watching part one. Now, to see the pressure chamber in use, please join us for part two of scheduling irrigation with a pressure chamber.